It only existed from 1983 to 1985, yet it produced some of the biggest names in football history, including Herschel Walker, Doug Flutie, Steve Young, Reggie White, Jim Kelly, and Gary Zimmerman, names that made lasting impacts in both the NFL and the CFL. Attempts were made more than a decade ago to resurrect the defunct league, but now football fans can look forward to the actual, really for real, rebirth of the United States Football League, scheduled for mid-April of next year. Keep listening to learn more about the details of the new USFL. Now. It's official, the United States Football League is set to return in the spring of 2022, specifically April 15. The reboot of the league was initially announced in June. The new USFL, owned by Fox Sports, touts itself as delivering high-quality, innovative professional football played in the spring and early summer. The new USFL will initially have eight teams in two divisions, north and south. Each team will play a 10-game schedule, with teams in the same division playing each other twice, and teams in the other division once. Teams announced for the inaugural season, the Birmingham Stallions, Michigan Panthers, Pittsburgh Maulers, New Jersey Generals, New Orleans Breakers, Tampa Bay Bandits, Philadelphia Stars, and the Houston Gamblers. The top two teams in each division will play against each other in the semifinals, followed by a week later with the championship game. In the inaugural season of the USFL, all eight teams will play in one location. In subsequent seasons, the USFL expects teams to play in their own markets. So next year, we'll see the USFL regular season starting in mid-April and running through mid-June, followed by the playoffs. Games will be played on both Saturdays and Sundays, with special broadcasts on specific Fridays and Mondays. Fox Sports is an official broadcast partner in the USFL and will air games on a weekly basis. Brian Woods, the founder and CEO of the Spring League, from 2017 to 2021, and a co-founder of the new USFL, will serve as the league's president of football operation. Interestingly, it was the Spring League that reached out to officials of the CFL to invite discussion around possible collaboration, outreach that was shut down by the Canadian League's officials. In addition to obtaining the legal rights to the original USFL name and logo, the new league has obtained the rights to other original USFL team names such as the Los Angeles Express, and Chicago Blitz. The merchandise is slowly appearing on the USFL website, using variations of the already existing trademarks from the 1980s league. At this point, it looks like we'll see all games played in Birmingham, Alabama. According to initial information, Birmingham will be responsible for housing the players during the season at the price of about $15 million for 47,000 or so hotel rooms, while the league would play the bubble season at Protective Stadium and Legion Field. To date, the broadcast proposal would look like this. 25% on Fox, 25% on NBC, 25% on Fox Sports, and 25% of the games on the USA Network. An awkward side note on the league's website, USFL doesn't get any easier for a website, right? Except that the official site is USFL2.com because USFL.com takes users to a Japanese site called Frontline. We have high hopes for the new USFL. Let's hope those games generate a more sustainable reality than the outcomes seen by the United Football League almost a decade ago and the Alliance of American Football and the XFL. Visit stephenchristiansen.ca for more episodes of Before, Behind, and Between. This podcast is available on all podcast apps and streaming platforms, including Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and TuneIn. I'm Stephen Christensen. Thanks for listening.
production of Stephen Christensen. Podcast complete.